So here we'll have a look at the decal end, just so people can see what it looks like. And look at the juice just coming out, it's super nice. Very excited to be eating this. Welcome back to Rolling Flame. Tonight we're cooking Wagyu beef brisket, marbling score eight to nine. It's twice the cost of the normal brisket, marbled, super delicious, so here we go. So this is called the packer's cut. So we have the flat here and the point here. So the lump is the point. And then the flat actually goes all the way underneath the point, but we're just going to cook this all in one go today. It's expensive, but it's actually not too bad once you think about how many meals this does. So we'll have all sorts of delicious burritos and tacos and brisket in macaroni cheese. And yeah, it lasts. So it's not, it's not that dear at the end of the day. Oh wow, so, so the fat is totally different. So normally you get hard fat on top of this. You can actually see it's really soft. So that's the difference with Wagyu. So it's really soft fat. I'm just gonna take this, this off. Hopefully there won't be too much liquid. Not a lot of liquid, which is really good. So this is the bottom side and we wanna have this completely clean. So we're just gonna take off all of this fat and we're not going to waste it of course we're just going to put it straight into this pan here and make beef tallow so that's great with roast potatoes So we've got the fat cap side of this and we're gonna leave this five millimeters thick, quarter of an inch if you're in the States. You don't have to use a binder, but I'm going to tonight. So I'm just going to use American mustard. And I'm going to do salt, pepper, garlic. So some people do salt, some people do salt and pepper, and some people do salt, pepper and garlic. And I just think it's better. So here we go rub it all over like that. It's going to help form this delicious bark and it, it will look black, but it's not burnt. Pat it on there. Now straight onto this tray, which is not big enough, but about right. And into the fridge. And we'll probably be getting up at about, I don't know, 4.35 a.m. Into the fridge, see you in the morning. Good morning, it's about 3 a.m. This is the hard part about cooking brisket. Oh, it smells amazing. The idea is just to let this come up to temperature. So you just put it on the bench. I'll let that happen while I light the charcoal. Okay, so the brisket is a bit wider than the smoker there. So the idea is to put a stick there so that it goes up and over the stick and that way it might fit in. So I just have to tuck it in a bit like that. Yeah, it's not perfect, I know, it'll do. So you can see this will just fit in. So, so the meat will actually shrink quite a lot when it's cooking. So it won't touch the sides so much. So we're just getting away with it on this occasion. How do we do this? Only just fits. Winning. And there we go. We have white smoke right now. That's a bit acrid. That's what happens when it first lights. But as this gets going, we'll just have this really thin blue hue of smoke. And that's what we want all day. This will take on the smoke flavor for the first three or four hours. And when the cook is fresh and after that, it doesn't take on that much of a smoky flavor, I guess. Um, but now the hard work is going to happen, which involves me sleeping and this smoking. Okay, barbecue is what you do when you've got other things to do. So I'm currently building a table for the new Uni uh, wood-fired 
oven. Well, it's actually a multi-fuel oven. Now, last night at 4 a.m. we put this Wagyu brisket in. We've got this beautiful temperature of 250 Fahrenheit, which is 125 Celsius. I opened this up earlier and I took the stick out that meant that it fitted inside because I said it would shrink and it has a little bit. But let's have a look. This is five and a half hours in. Let's take a little gander. Oh, yum. Oh, that looks superb. So, so it has formed a, a bark there, especially on top. But putting some liquid on actually helps the fat render out a little bit. And I have a mixture of just white vinegar and water here. And I just do this periodically through the cook. And the whole yard smells delicious. In fact, I was down the backyard and this delicious smell is drifting through the whole neighborhood. So I hope they're not, um, I hope they don't mind that. Okay. Okay, it's uh, 11 o'clock and it's only been in for seven hours and from what I can make of it, it's ready. So last time I did a Wagyu brisket, it didn't take very long at all and it's the case this time. So it should probe like butter, so that should just fall in there and it does. So, yep, in all places it's just, it just about fall in under its own weight as you can see, it's <laughs> like that. We can rest this for up to four hours in an esky or a cambro, um, just wrap, wrapped in foil, maybe double wrapped in foil. But I've got to get it off. Okay. Try not to break the foil. So what I'll do is I'll just come up on the sides like this. Take it over. Oh, hot. It's Australia. It's Australia in summer, and yes, we have a few flies. I can hear them buzzing. Okay, and that will stay, that will still be hot in about four hours time. So the purpose of resting is to just let the meat relax and it will just get even more tender and beautiful. So yeah, we'll come back in a few hours. Brisket is so delicious reheated, so you can actually cook it the day before and reheat it if you have an event. It's actually unpredictable. Um, sometimes it could take 13 hours to cook. Today it's taken seven hours. Yes, I ran the smoker a little bit hotter today, around about 250 or 260. When I run it at 220, that would have taken all the way till about three or four o'clock in the afternoon, around about 12 hours. So um, there you go, hot and fast. Okay, so it's many hours later. Uh, we've had our Wagyu brisket sitting in this Cambro. It's double wrapped in foil. It's also wrapped in a towel. What time is it now? Seven o'clock. Six hours it's been in here. Smells amazing. Yeah, so it's not so hot that I can't hold it, but it's just below that. Okay, let's do the reveal. Okay, yum. So before I knew anything about barbecue, they would say this was burnt, but it's not. Let's see what temperature this is now. 134 Fahrenheit. So yeah, it's about what a medium well steak would be. Actually, no, medium rare steak. I'm just gonna use hands. So this side's the flat, this side's the point. You can see the point there, or the decal. The flat gets cut this way, and the decal gets cut this way. So I'm just going to cut into the middle and let's see what our results are. Obviously it's falling apart. Yeah, so it's nice and juicy. As you can see, it's beautiful and plump. So I'm just going to take a slice, so about that thick. The bark is, oh wow, just oozing out juice. I'm gonna pop that in. Mm. The flavor of that 
is amazing. So it's just got this beautiful, rich meat, very juicy and succulent. It has an ironbark flavor, nicely salted. I'm getting the pepper and the garlic as well. I would describe that as decadent. So it's super delicious. And we'll see you next time on Rolling Flame. Mm.